welcome back to my channel. I am your host, DHO2 Productions. Now, we're here to talk about my third favorite ranger of the original five of all time, which is Debbie Yost. Actually, before Tommy, Debbie Yost was my third favorite ranger out of the original five. And let's just say, when it comes to the show and the comics themselves, he definitely left a huge impact and into my childhood. And I'm gonna explain why. Now, my history with the character alone, it really goes to show you that if you have the type of childhood heroes that I or you grew up with in the 90s, I will advise you to comment down below childhood heroes growing up. And if I see one comment about Power Rangers or Marvel or any of the characters that you grew up with, I'll probably give you a shout out towards the end of the video. Now, getting back to my history of the character, and it wasn't long ago when, a few years ago, I was, I think it was around 2005 or six when I really and heavily got into Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, like from all three seasons, starting with season one because of the Japanese stock footage. And let's just say my obsession with Billy was through the roof because he was a nerd, he was cool, and the Triceratops dinosaur is my second favorite dinosaur out of the original five. Now, I think the coolest thing about Billy is his character growth throughout three seasons. Um, season one, just your typical nerdiest Blue Ranger you've ever seen on TV. And each time when he start, when he starts talking nerdy, Trini was always there to speak on behalf of his techno battle. Starting with episode two, where he created the communicators for the first time to travel and to talk through. And if y'all noticed these Apple Watches, there was one, well, they were the ones that came out with the Apple Watches where you could just talk through your uh, watches. It's like you're talking to a communicator. And I think they were all heavily influenced by Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, any other TV show that has something to do with communicating through a watch. So I think around the yeah second episode when he created the communicators for the first time and Alpha and Zona pretty much gave the update so when there's trouble they'll teleport to the command center. And it was the seventh episode when he created the wrap up, the flying car that flies around to the command center of anywhere you go and everywhere you go. So, Billy, for the most part, is a legit ranger because he was the one that came up with this and that, communicators, the wrap up, you name it. And it wasn't around, I think, the 13th, yeah, I think it was about, yeah, 13th episode when Billy had a left entrance, Mars, and when got asked to the uh, dance, to the school dance or whatever, though, it wasn't really a dance or a prom or anything, it was just like a... I think that school dances normally be. So it really created a monster called Madame Roll, which she's on the Sega Genesis. Trash, by the way. Don't play the Sega Genesis. I've done multiple speed runs a couple of times, and most of it are successful or fail. Billy, he got his behind kick for the most part, but he turned around and just crushes her jaw on her forehead to stop people from going into dimensions and everything. But it wasn't around the 15th episode when it was more of a Trini and Billy focused episode. Mostly Billy because he wanted to learn martial arts from Jason. But given the fact that when he transforms into a ranger, he knows how to fight like a martial arts master. But when he's not transformed, he fights like a chicken. And if you play the Super Nintendo game, you will know how much of a punk he is the way he runs. According to VGL58, so shout out to you, man. Billy had so many great memories throughout three seasons. Mostly in season one, because he was the one that created everything. Uh, communicators, rap, uh, he had some pretty good focus episodes dedicated to him. And pretty much so, he was the one that fixed Alpha 5 during the Green Medieval Saga. And he was the one that reprogrammed the command center when Tommy destroyed it first. And not to mention, during the Zhu 2 run, Billy, and he had an episode where he was afraid of fish because of Rita's spell. And mind you, the fish monster was voiced by um, Robert Axlord, who later became Lord Zed in Power Rangers history. Rise in peace to him. 
So he was the one that voices monsters in the early seasons when he voices the fish monster and then when he became Lord Zed. I think from then on, the, I think it was another episode when Billy, he had a bead for the first time. Let me tell you something, getting a bead on your paper is not that bad. It just goes to show you that you can do better, you just gotta study hard. You're still getting good grades regardless, so I don't know what they're thinking of making a B a terrible grade. It's, it's better than an A, right? A, B, C, as long as you don't get a D, or if you get a D plus, that means you pass. But if you get an F, you're done. I had some good focus episodes in season two when different races were coming from all over the world to express their cultures to the people, and Billy was talking to some French girl this was the time when Adam, Rocky, and Aisha were around before they became Rangers. So Billy was just being the flirt as usual. And it wasn't until the another episode when Billy was testing out this thing and then he fought the putties unmorphed by himself. And he even fought Godard at one point by just kicking him in the chest. But that was one time. He didn't really fight him one on one on a couple of times or anything. And yeah, Billy was that ranger. And he had that not so good finale episode. Just like season one, Zach had a focus episode about the oyster stew when he tried to bribe Angela. But Billy pretty much had an evil clone of him once more. Let's just face it, Billy, for the most part, in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, has always had evil spells on him and everything. And let's just say that he went through a lot. Try to be good, and then Rita or Zed turns him evil, he becomes a total different person. Let's just say he's like the big show of Power Rangers. He's a face at one point, and then he turns heel. Think about that. The uh, now so good finale of season two of Mighty Morphin, Billy had a focus episode when he had to fight a clone of his own. Come to find out that Goldar created a fake Billy out of his statue. So when Billy was talking to this girl, that she created some type of hologram. And he was impressed with it. And I think it was around season three when Billy had a, I think, I think it was either Billy or Cat Focus episode. It was mostly Billy because he fought the Brick Monster. Well, Billy, I, well, Billy was the one that was, he fought the, the Brick Monster. And it was a pretty good fight. He put up a fight for the most part. But when he got into his um, Shogun Zord, he pretty much did what he had to do to put a stop into it, to break the spell, to free the Rangers from bricks. Yeah, Billy had a pretty outstanding run in the Mighty Morphin run. But when it came to the Alien Ranger saga, when they turned the Rangers back to kids, God, I hate that season. That season sucked. The Alien Rangers are a travesty in the Power Rangers community. Let me tell you why. They disrespected Billy's character by turning him back to normal, and he he did nothing, which is, I mean, all he ever did was look after the Kid Rangers, and then they, they did this stupid quest to find the Zeo Crystals, and it was around the 10th episode when the Rangers turned back to adults. Godar and Rito blew up the command center. Okay. The Alien Ranger Saga is a disaster. Season 3 is the weakest season of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Although it has some good focus episodes, strong writing, and good episodes in multi-parts, but the Alien Ranger Saga killed it for me. He had an interesting character development in Zeo when he became a technician and stopped being a ranger when Tanya took his place as a ranger. But he gave his powers to Tanya. And for those of you who don't know what went on behind the scenes during Zeo, because David Yost actually walked out of set during the Zeo season because the producers and the directors and the writers were questioning his sexuality of being gay or anything. And he came out back in 2010. And I was one of those people that, that was shocked that he came out of the closet. Because I had no idea that he was gay at the time. But... Here's the interesting thing about David Yost. I think around 2007 or 6 when I got my computer for the first time, I was on the internet and I couldn't help but to scroll down Billy's picture. And he was carrying some type of roses 
and he was wearing a blue baseball t-shirt and he was kissing on some guy I'm like wait a second why is Billy kissing dudes like that's not the Billy I know and like I said 2010 on YouTube finding out that he was gay and it was due to him being sexually harassed and questioning his homosexuality being being called you know homophobic slurs or anything so much so to the point where he wanted to take his own life and it's been well documented go look it up it's there I think that's what made me respect Debbie Yost the most because he came out in 2010 but it was in a sad way because of being harassed on set because of his sexuality but it wasn't on Mighty Morphin it was Zeal the season that that many fans have mixed feelings on it because of what happened behind the scenes with David Yost. So, David, if you're watching this, man, I love you, dog. You're one of my favorite Power Rangers in the Mighty Morphin series, not the Alien Ranger saga, just saying. And you are one of my third favorite Power Rangers, and you rock. So, this is a shout out to you. And before we end this video off, let's take a moment to to talk about the Boom Studio Comics. The Boom Studio Comics of Go Go Power Rangers and Mighty Morphin, I feel like they did him differently, but I did not like his character designs because Billy did not look like that in season one when it came to his hair. Like, standing like this. It was supposed to look like how he was in the TV show. But thankfully in Go Go Power Rangers, they made Billy look like the Billy from the pilot episode when it came to the hairstyle. So, I like the Go-Go Power Rangers Billy than the Mighty Morphin one. Although, the Mighty Morphin one had Billy do something very stupid and suspicious by keeping the secret from Zornar and them by helping Grace create the new Green Ranger. And up until Zornar told the, but uh, Billy told Zornar what was going on, Zornar got really mad at Billy which was really unnecessary that you wanted to replace him as a ranger. But I really don't think that's fair to, you know, to Billy, even though he, you know, kept the secret. But why would you want to replace a ranger that has been with you since day one? That really messed me up on side. I mean, messed me up inside when I was reading the reviews, um, watching the reviews on YouTube. And... Zona pretty much messed up on that one though, but even though Billy kept the secret, he was still active as a ranger at the time. But I have a feeling when it comes to this next story arc that Billy is going to end up becoming a Power Ranger once again. But I don't know what's going to happen when he's not a ranger anymore. He's still going to be a ranger when they continue with, with this storyline. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but overall, Billy Cranston, third favorite Power Ranger of all time. And Triceratops is my favorite Zord as well. Well, third favorite one. So a shout out to David Yost for portraying the character and giving me childhood memories that I can cherish forever. And really had a huge impact. So y'all enjoyed this video? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm out.